Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's webinar on putting solutions for horse professionals. Tonight, we have a great guest with us. Uh, her name is Glennie Walford. She's been with the Martin Collins Group for over 22 years. She has extensive knowledge across the sport horse and thoroughbred racing worlds, uh, having been actively involved in both. She was the managing director of the, of the British-based company, Martin Collins, before relocating to the U.S. in 2010. To promote the company and its products here in the USA. Gunny has coached the British Dressage Regional Advisors on footing, has spoken to the Aachen School of Course Design in Germany, and, and presented to students at equine colleges. Gunny is a rider and was a dressage comp competitor for many years and worked for thoroughbred trainers in the UK. She now has a keen interest in the cutting horse world and has foot horses. So, Glenny, I'd like to welcome you. Uh, to our webinar tonight. I know you've got some great information to go over. We've already had a bunch of questions come in. Uh, if you have a question and you're on the line, you can see there's a, a place down at the, the bottom right-hand side of the screen to push a question in, and we'll get to this towards the end of the webinar. So, Glennie, I'm going to hand it over to you and uh, let you take it away. Well, thank you very much indeed for having me, and um, I hope I can uh, give everyone some useful information and welcome all questions. So uh, I'll just get started. Horse locomotion. The first slide, Jeremy Byrne, <clears throat> who um, was actually at the uh, Bristol University, still is at Bristol University. So equine locomotion is based on a system of limbs that oscillate in the direction of travel as the animal moves. The stance phase is weight bearing and occurs when the hoof is in contact with the ground. The force between the hoof and the ground is known as the ground reaction force and concentrates on the way in which the horse pushes against the ground. The GRF force necessary to stop the hoof is known as the impact force and is implicated in the development of certain types of musculoskeletal injury. Therefore, surface performance is in direct correlation to the risk of injury. Now, ideally, what we would all love uh, would be good going turf. Traditional turf has been wonderful for all equestrian sports for a very long time. However, it can be difficult, as we all know, to maintain in perfect condition. It either is a little bit too dry or we get the other scenario where it's too wet. But under ideal conditions, turf is the blueprint for a synthetic surface. And as I've just said, it is severely affected by climatic conditions, so it does fluctuate somewhat. So leading on from that, we see the requirements of a synthetic riding surface to be one that is safe and sympathetic on which to train and compete your horse. It's got to be consistent, has to be durable, has to have some climatic tolerance, and ideally easier to maintain. Um, this is just a humorous one here. I haven't quite got there with giraffes yet, but um, I'm sure we're all working on it. The next few slides are just some different shots which illustrate how a synthetic surface should be able to cope with different weather conditions. Uh, this is a shot actually in the UK um, in Addington, Addington Manor in Buckinghamshire during a downpour. This is of polo where the horses are required to accelerate and decelerate um, quite quickly and turn and one where the ball has to be able to roll over the top of a synthetic surface. The surface obviously has to provide stability and support. This actually is Totalus, whom we all loved, um, competing. And again, the dressage horse, again, support for those limbs, whether it be canter pirouette, uh, extended to collected trot, changes, 
various movements. The racehorse, the thoroughbred, able again to accelerate, decelerate, move easily over the ground, be able to push off from that very powerful engine that it has, and be able to work consistently and safely. Show jumpers. This is Nick Skelton, actually. Um, I believe this was Arco um, at Windsor Castle. And again, for the show jumper, has to have stability upon push-off. And then the all-important landing, whereby the first foreleg is obviously the, what we call the prop leg, and the second foreleg is the one that actually uh, bears the weight. Adaptable. And I think this illustrates that it has to be adaptable. This is King's Troop, Royal Horse Artillery. Uh, gun carriages, horses, we've had dog agility and all sorts of things. So a, a synthetic surface has to be adaptable. Race tracks. Uh, this particular shot is of a racetrack in Turkey. Moving on from those shots, we uh, will now start on the subject of construction. Choose your location very carefully. Um, do consider the size of the ring, the location of it, preparing the location. Remember that the more, and, I'm, and do forgive me, everyone, if I am going over items or, or, or certain parts of the subjects that you know already. But I'm just trying to give a very detailed overview for you and some useful pointers. Ensure that the more level your site, the less expensive it is going to be to construct the ring. So no great what we call cut and fill, and I'll come on to that in a second. Take into consideration where you're going to place the ring. Is it a sheltered spot? If it is, great from prevailing winds, but watch for that all-important tree belt. Watch for roots that you don't hit those roots on excavation, and also watch for leaf fall, leaf contamination. Bear in mind obstructions that you might have to move. Would they be expensive to move? And also bear in mind utilities. <clears throat> don't want to hit those during the course of construction. Can be expensive. Um, drainage and grading. Grading I've touched on, uh, and again, the more level the site, Ideally, ideally, it would be one where you could build on a, a, on a level site, so the horse is always working on a level base. I think the days now of the domes or crowns and cross falls are slowly going to be seen to be uh, disappearing, and, and a more level, free-draining uh, base be more popular. Drainage, as we all know, is incredibly important. A free draining base means one where the water will fall onto the surface through the base construction into a drainage system that takes water away. So you won't have to cope with those uh, problems of slop or too dry. You, you really want to try now and create a good, consistent riding surface on which you can train um, most of the year round, uh, and we'll get on to climate. Base materials, several different pointers there. Ensure that whatever you do, and the money in the piggy bank goes to installing a good base. If you have a good base, um, you can always upgrade your surface. If you have a poor base, then unfortunately you're going to have to go right the way back to square one again, and, and get that base right if it fails for whatever reason. So ensure that you're getting good quality materials and that leads on to the contractor. Really do your homework. Go out there. Um, they should be able to give you existing clients that you can talk to. You should try and go and see rings that have been installed by this particular or a particular contractor. Ask those clients, how did they find the contractor to work with? Were they professional? Uh, did they take all the worry away from them? Did they, did they specify what they were going to use on the base? And did they perform the job correctly? Because what you shouldn't have to do is you should have 
to have the uh, trust and the respect of your contractor to know that he's looking after you and what he constructs is is a good base and a good ring on which you can ride and train your horses. The drainage design. I have talked a little bit about a free draining base. There are still rings that we work with uh, where there are cross falls, but as I've said, most people are moving more toward taking those out and and building a level a level base. Now the drainage design is basically one where we actually um, advocate um, water draining not horizontally but vertically, if that makes sense. So the water lands on the footing, dissipates through the footing, works its way then down through a clean stone layer, a filtration layer, um, and there would be a membrane, and please don't be worried by membranes, because I'll talk about those, and I'm sure there are some questions on membranes. Um, through a membrane, sorry, through your clean stone drainage layer, down into a series of drains, and those drains then all interlink, cross drains across the arena, into a perimeter drain that then will drain out to outfalls at the lowest point. So take the water away from the ring. And I can always talk about that in, in greater depth, but that gives you, a, a, I think, hopefully a good overview. But the stone on the drainage layer should be a clean stone. No fines, no dust, because if there is, then that is basically going to render that base impervious over a, a period of time. Be watchful of the drainage backfill that's laid over those perforated pipes. It again must be clean stone, no fines, no dust, otherwise you'll end up with the same problem. So I think really it's using clean stone. Um, we uh, only tend to find um, porous tarmac being used mainly on tracks. Very little of it is used on arenas. So I think that hopefully covers the, in, in brief the drainage design. Here um, you'll basically see that uh, track machines are used. And you have some very good machines here, bobcats on tracks, which I think are just the bee's knees. And they're very efficient. And a track machine will not ruin your base. Um, the idea is to lay the first load of surface always working over your surface, never on your base. But a track machine also will track in your stone layer when it's laid. But obviously you never let um, a machine run over a porous tarmac top layer or a membrane top layer. Now this is a good one. Here we come to the membrane. Try and find a really good top membrane that's maybe about 16 ounces a needle punch geotextile. These days, um, they're a lot more sophisticated than they were. Gone are those days, and we've all suffered from it, where we have our surface, and then you can see a little bit of membrane poking up after a period of time. Uh, nowadays, this geotextile comes 